If you want your tendons to turn into springs so you can jump higher, then you clicked on the right video. This is Takeaway Tuesday, episode number two, where I decipher John Evans and Isaiah Rivera talking about jump training. Those are my coaches, and then I'm gonna summarize it and teach you guys. This is a good way for both of us to learn. Hope you guys enjoy. It's very fast. My body weight workout. Moving, and I think in. Just finished up, it was a 12 minute video and I wrote almost three pages of notes. Let's summarize it. When you jump, there's a super fast eccentric and a super fast concentric. The eccentric being when you lower into the jump and the concentric being when you explode upwards. That is called a stress shortening cycle. And there's a small window in between that transfer of energy called the isometric condition. The stronger you are in the isometric condition, the faster you'll be able to amortize or transfer your energy. So the faster you transfer your energy, the better your stress shortening cycle will be. And the less energy you'll leak, allowing you to have higher peak forces, which allows you to jump higher. Do not try to do this artificially. It has to come naturally as a byproduct of getting better in the weight room and just becoming a better jumper in general. If you do do it artificially, it'll mess up your impulse curve, which is force times time. And the goal of jumping is to be able to produce a ton of force over a long period of time. But if you do it artificially, you're just going to be able to do it for this split second. And you might have higher peak forces, but if you can't produce it over a long period of time, you won't unlock your true potential. Now we're going to get into some ways you can improve the isometric condition and turn those tendons into some springs. You want to load at max intensity for two to five seconds. Now the most common one I've seen is you put enough weight on the bar where it's impossible for you to move and you get into like... For a two foot jumper, it would be like a little above a half squat, and for a one foot jumper, it would be like a quarter squat. And you get in that position and try as hard as you can to push up. Three, four, time. And you wanna go, you wanna load at max intensity, so you wanna try as hard as you can for two to five seconds. Now, the great thing about max effort isometric is there's no excuses. You can do this anywhere because all isometric RFD is is trying to pick up an immovable object. Okay, you can do this on a door frame, you can do this. On your car, you can do this on a tree, you can do this on a wall, you can even do that on the floor, okay? There's literally endless possibilities. The tree died! Ideally, you wanna do this with weights because it's just simpler, but again, there's no excuses because your body doesn't know the difference between a tree and weights. It just knows intensity. For the most transfer, you wanna do these isometrics in a position of a jump. So for a one foot jumper, it'd be like a quarter squat, and for a two foot jumper, it'd be like a half squat, maybe a little above a half squat. You wanna load this at max intensity for two to five seconds, and then you also wanna periodize it, but I don't think I'm qualified to talk about it. I don't fully understand it. So go check out John and Isaiah's channel. It'll be in the description. But there are some downsides to isometric RFD. It can absolutely destroy your knee cartilage. It destroyed Isaiah's, and it took a month to get back to normal. And they do not recommend that you even think about doing isometric RFD if you've had cartilage problems in the past. But if you really, really want to and you're stubborn about it, you can do it, but do not do it in the range of motion that hurts or in the position that hurts. Go a little above it or a little below. Just work around it if you really want to. It's actually safer to do for one foot jumpers because you're more hip dominant and it's not putting so much pressure on the knee. All right, I think that's it for today's topic. Please subscribe, comment below what you think the next topic should be. Uh, I'm actually really enjoying the series because I'm learning a lot. And so I hope you guys are. This video actually took me almost two hours to film or to learn and write down and talk about it and teach it. And so I'm definitely learning. I hope you guys are too. Have a great rest of your day. Just to clear things up, ISOs for your knee health is not the same as this. For knee health, you would do ISOs at a low load for a long period of time so you can uncrimp the tendon.